Hey guys, welcome back to Hellstorm Wargaming and welcome to a brand new 3D printer review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Elegoo Neptune 2, which is a brand new FDM or plastic filament printing printer by Elgoo. Elgoo are famous for making the Elegoo Mars, the Elgoo Mars Pro, the Elgoo Mars 2 Pro, the Elegoo Saturn, the Elegoo Neptune 1, which was a while ago, and now the Elegoo Neptune 2. I'm re-recording this intro because I, I like recorded this before I opened the printer and it didn't come across very well. <laughs> it was very like, hey guys, welcome to Hellstorm. So I've already had the printer unboxed, but we're going to be going through some of the other footage. Uh, we're going to go unbox it, build it, and then try and get something printed on it and then give my overall thoughts about the printer. Thank you much to Elgu for sending the printer to me for this video so I could unbox it and show it off to you. So without further ado, let's build a printer. So we start off by unboxing the printer. This is kind of like a part kit build, so it's not like completely built from scratch. It is constructed in some places, but you will have to assemble the frame to the bed and attach the extruder, etc. It is not like a open the box and plug and plug. There is a little bit of mechanical construction involved in this printer. And sadly, when I opened mine, it, this must have happened in shipping, but all the screws had actually come loose from the bed. So the leveling screws, because this is, doesn't have an automatic leveling system, the leveling screws have actually come loose in shipment. So the bed had actually like completely fallen off and all the screws and stuff had like disappeared somewhere in the box. So I had to root for those. So once I'd found all the screws, I ended up taking out the bed from the packaging. There's also the extruder and the essentially uprights for the Z axis as well. Underneath there, we had a little tool bag, which had some belts in, which you'll need attaching, some a spare nozzle and some other accessories, such as Allen keys, etc. Power supply, drive motor for the Z-axis, the drive rod, overarm for the gantry, the power supply, a couple of other motors for the system and a couple of tools as well. I did notice in the, the bed had a little bit of a wobble and I kind of figured that this might have been to do with the shipping because obviously the screws had fell out so I thought it had been knocked quite hard. I soon realised this issue was fixable and we'll get onto that in a little bit. However, now I'm going to build the printer. There's a helpful video on the memory card that's included and you've got a nice instruction manual. But let me tell you some details about this printer while past me builds it. So this printer has a build volume of 220mm by 220mm by 250mm with a precision of 0.1mm. Now, obviously, Neptune has quite a large build volume compared to the other printers that Elegoo have on offer. However, in the FDM market or the plastic printing market, this is fairly standard. It has a Bowden extruder with a filament runout sensor. The printer will pause if, if it detects there's no more filament. And it has a heated bed as well to help with adhesion. The bed is actually textured. I'm not sure on the material as of time of filming, but it does have a texture to it to help with adhesion to the bed. It says it can resume printing if there's ever a power cut, if it ever stops halfway through. I haven't tested this system yet, but the functionality does seem to be on the motherboard. It comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and it does come with a spare one as well. Again, fairly standard for this type of printer. It has a max nozzle temperature of 260 degrees and a max hotbed temperature of 100 degrees. It has a USB type B connection on the front along with a micro SD card. The fans in this machine have smart control, meaning once it gets down to a certain temperature, the fans will actually turn off, unlike some other printers, which will always run the fans while the printer is on. This is the first time I've built a printer from this far down, as it were, in this many bits. I think it took me about 35 to 45 minutes to build it. It was relatively straightforward. I found it was best to like read a couple of instructions ahead before you did anything, just to make sure you didn't make a mistake. At this point, I still had a really bad wobble in the frame, and it wasn't until I watched another video about this printer that I realised that one of the screws is actually loose, so what I had to do is like undo the main A-frame of the printer, and then tighten it all back up, and then put it back together, and that seemed to get rid of the wobble but what it's best to do is before you start leveling a bed unlike what i did here is to go around and make sure everything's super tight all the screws are tight make sure the bed isn't wobbling because what i do is spend about 10 to 15 minutes leveling the bed then i realize the bed is super wobbly so i have to tighten it up and then re-level it so don't do what i do please take my advice I've got to say the screen on this machine is really nice. It's very akin to the other models of printers that they make, which is actually really nice compared to all the FDM printers on the market. It feels really friendly to use. It's very clear what's on screen and what's happening. And it's very the screen is very responsive. So hats off to Elgoo for keeping in line with this screen that they've kind of made for the other printers and just incorporating into this machine really well. The only downside to this printer is that it is manual leveling. So this is kind of like if you've owned other FDM printers in the past few years, you're probably very used to this. But this is a case of taking a piece of paper and telling the nozzle to go to different points on the bed and then manually leveling it and manually creating the space in between to a point where the nozzle is touching the paper but it is allowing it to pass underneath and move underneath so if you if it can't move it's too close if it moves too freely it's too far away and this is kind of like a case of going around 
and level in each corner and then check in the center and then level in each corner again to make sure you have enough space in between you have to have a bit of a knack for this it's not very easy this is the first time i've leveled an fdm printer in about five years so i was asking a few friends for advice on this but i think i got there in the end you should always level the bed at temperature that you're going to print so have the nozzle around 200 degrees have the bed around 50 or 60 degrees but once you've done that you can jump straight into feeding the filament in this has a little unique filament clip the motor that is driving the filament around can actually grab the filament and send it the wrong way so just keep an eye on it while you are sending it in squeeze you can basically squeeze and then feed the filament through and then it should grab it and then feed it through to the extruder itself after that, it's just a case of finding a file, hitting print and hoping for the best. On the card, there's actually a model already on there. It's a little Buddha, which is like really cute. And I was like, okay, I'm going to print this bad boy. On the memory card, there's a, a version of Curran f designed for the this new Elegoo printer. I believe you can also slice for the other two printers as well, but I haven't tried those out. I tried this version of Curran to slice other models. But first off, I tried printing the Buddha. And then this is where I start to have a few problems. For some reason, I could start the print, but every time the models kept falling off the bed, it kept not adhering properly, and I couldn't really work it out. So I tried re-leveling the bed, tried printing at hotter temperatures, I tried at different speeds. I also tried re-slicing the model myself in Cura, and trying different models such as benches, calibration cats, etc. I did eventually get calibration cats to start printing, but they were coming out really, really bad, as you can see from these pictures. So once I've got one calibration cat going, this is the first one, and as you can see, it is kind of complete, but I, it's obviously terrible. So I started like tuning the settings, I started pumping up the temperature, slowing the speed down, until a point where I have now have eight calibration cats, as you can see. So if anyone would like a calibration cat, let me know down in the comments. To a point where I actually got a calibration cat that looked like a calibration cat, and it didn't have any layer shifts. It did start to peel a little bit on one of the feet, but it was looking like a cat. I was really chuffed. Finally got one. It'd take me like four days to get one because I was like working on it between other things. And it's really disheartening when you set something to print and it fails because to get to this point, not only did I have to go through all of the calibration cats, which we have eight of, I have like just a pile of, well, we'll talk about this one in a minute. I just have like a pile of failed prints. So I have like a Benchy, which I tried, which failed. I have the Buddha, which eventually started printing, but the head has fallen off because I just couldn't get the layers to adhere to each other. I have another Benchy, which got off part way and then lifted off. I have a calibration cat, which its feet fell off. As you can see, I just made a mess, right? I just I just made a mess. It kept failing and I couldn't get the cats to bloody work and it was so frustrating. I tried something bigger. I had my friend Danny from I'll Print You One helping me out with this and he was like kind of dumbfound by it as well. We just couldn't work out why it was doing this and it was just like, I wasn't doing anything weird. I was just using this Cura slicer. Anyway, I finally got one to work. It was really slow. It was running really cold and it finally actually like it worked and I was like, okay, fantastic. We've got a calibration cat. Let's go gamers. So then I was like, right, we've got the cat working. I need to print something bigger to try it out. I also need something for this video, so I'm going to look at some busts. So I went to my mini factory and I found Fotis Mint's latest Darth Vader bust, which is super nice. I really like it. And I started printing that. And then a few hours later, I came back to check it and I had very similar issues. It kind of, it failed. So I did stop the print. It started like peeling off the bed and, and like warping and it like, we've got the big layer separation in the middle. I just couldn't work it out. I just didn't understand what was going on. So we got more failed prints. I was like, for God's sake, what is what is wrong with this? So that's when I reached out, <laughs> took a punt and I messaged Uncle Jesse on Twitter. I dropped him a DM and I was just like, hey, mate, I'm really struggling with this printer. I know you've got one. Have you had any luck? Because I just can't do anything. I sent him pictures of this. And he was just dumbfound by it as well. And I was like, I'm just using Cura. I don't know what's going wrong. And he was like, I'm not using Cura because I can't install it. So I, I'm using Prusa Slicer. And I was like, okay, I've never used Prusa Slicer. I've only used Cura. So why not? I'll give it a go because I've got nothing else to lose right now. <laughs> so I gave it a go. I did another calendar calibration cap with a Prusa slicer. I set it up as an ND3 as per his suggestion. That was what he was doing. Anyway, a calibration cap and we got one. We got the most perfect calibration cap I've ever seen. The most perfect calibration cap we've ever seen. Look at it. Look how beautiful it is. Look at this cat. Have you ever seen a calibration cat so nice? No, no, me neither. Not until I've seen this one because it was just, it was the ninth calibration cat that had finished. I think I've printed probably 15 calibration cats and I just, I finally got one that actually looked good that ran at a normal speed. It was like, you know, printed at 195 degrees. It was like 60 on the bed. It ran at a pretty standard speed. And I was just like, oh, thank God. I finally got a calibration cat. So that's when I went back to my mining factory. I was like, I'm not going to do the Darth Vader yet. I'm going to order some new PLA. I'm going to do it in black. But whilst I wait, I'm going to print something else. 
And I'm a big fan of Star Wars, as you can probably imagine. And in the other printer review, I did Mandalorian. I did a f support free Mandalorian. So I did a th support free Mandalorian buster, which was also available in my mini factory. Again, if there's any models that I'm using in this video, I'll leave a link down in the description. Anyway, so it's like a 12 hour print. So I was like, okay, I'll get it going. And, and it started off pretty, pretty well. So I was like, okay, I'll leave it, right? 0% infill, support free, off we go. I came downstairs the next day and I was like, oh, so close to greatness. As you see, the, the first half of the model printed pretty well, but for some reason it had a weird Z, a Z, I don't know what, what you'd, you'd call it, a Z lock I'm going to call it, because essentially it didn't want to go any higher for some reason. So it kind of like got to this point and then it just, just the, the Z axis just didn't go up anymore. So you can see the helmet, is, it's trying to print the helmet. You can see the layer lines. You can see like where the, the nozzle has been, but for some reason it got stuck. Basically like went up and down the printer, gave everything a good tighten. I made sure the Z axis could go all the way to the top, but I'm not sure. So we almost got a good print. There was a couple of issues with this print. We had a little bit of an extrusion issue. So there's like some layer separation there. There's a little bit of a retraction issue. So there's like some stringing, but overall it was nothing to compared to what I'd seen already. But we had a large print which is much larger than the calibration cap. So because I had that failed print, I, I kind of work it out. So I just kind of went, went, made it smaller and printed again. And we got a Mandalorian bust at 70% scale. This is printed with 15% infill. As you can see, there are some issues with the print. There's a couple of like inconsistent layer lines. There's some retracting issues because we got a lot of stringing, but we had a, a complete bust. Again, it's not, it's about the same size. It's a little bit taller. So I knew my Z axis wasn't the issue. It could run up and down. It just didn't for that model. So I presume that was a slicing issue. But then I was like, okay, I need to fine tune this print now i did some e-steps calibration i'll leave a link to teaching text website which is really good for this sort of thing so i did some e-steps calibration so i got some essentially you print these so they have a 0.4 millimeter wall thickness they, these guys didn't so i actually because it was a it was like the wrong size so you tune it again and then you print it again and we had a perfect one i then changed the pla and i did some retraction tests so i did the cooling towers where essentially you have different retraction distances so i got one that was nice so i've changed it so hopefully i have no stringing issues and then I printed another Mandalorian, but in black. But um, this was a test, so I just sprayed it as well. I only have two colors of PLA and everyone on the video. So I was like nine different colors and they're like, this is like nebula and this is like fire orange. And I'm like, okay, I've got spray can. So here's a silver, a black PLA, but in silver. This is at 50% size. So this is looking a lot better. There was no stringing on this. We've still got a little bit of ley line inconsistency, but not as much as we had before. So we've got three Mandalorian busts now. Uh, so if ever, anyone wants a headless Mandalorian, let me know. Uh, George's claimed that one and I've claimed that one. After that, I went back and printed the Photis Mint bust. I did it in one piece, did it with supports. And I kind of had some issues because um, I couldn't get all the supports off. So we have a terrible Darth Vader bust. It comes in like multiple bits, but this was like the whole bit piece in one. I've not really worked with supports in plastic before. And uh, I got a lot of them off, but I kind of gave up after a bit because they were all in here and that was just terrible. So I just used all the supports. I didn't know what I was doing. It was just a test. So anyway, I printed it again. This time I printed the bust on its own and that came out great. And then I printed the head on supports and the supports are really easy to remove. It's just the case of plopping it back in. So we had a fantastic Darth Vader bust. Look at this. So this, again, this model is by Photos Mint. A lot of people on YouTube seem to use him. He's a really nice, obviously clearly very talented designer and he has lots of great models. So this one's really, really cool. I really like this one. So we had a perfect Darth Vader bust. So I didn't stop there, guys. No, no, no. Of course I didn't. And anyone who does know is knows that I'm not only a, War a Warhammer fan, a 3D printing fan, a Star Wars fan. I'm also a massive weeb. So I actually printed Star Platinum, which is also available on my mini factory. Now, I can't remember the designer. It'll be on screen. I'll leave a link in the description. This is, um, again, some nebula blue spray over black PLA. <laughs> and this came out great. This was pre-supported. So, I, like, the, all the hair was supported. But I was really chuffed with this. I'm, like, I'm a massive JoJo fan. So, I printed this. They also have the world as well, which I'm going to print afterwards. But, like, this was really, really cool. I really like this. This was very poggers. So, that came out great as well. And I was like, okay, right. I'm a Warhammer fan. People are here because probably because they want 3D printers for Warhammer. So I actually left one on the bed and I 3D printed a crate. So an industrial crate in black PLA. I think it's Sunlu PLA. Again, everything I use, I'll leave a link in the description. They are Amazon affiliate links, so they do help out the channel. So I appreciate it if you do. Um, so this is a model by Wall Layer. Not, I'm not sponsored by them. I did pay for this file, but they came with like a pack, like industrial crates that you can use. And this is the textured bed. I kind of want to give an example. You kind of just have to bend it to pop the model off which is very satisfying, which I thought you wanted to see. And then once it's done, you can just peel that off. You can see my bed is now wrecked because I've printed so much on it now. 
And this came out fantastic. This is, again, 5% infill. It's really solid. I'm using Prusa Slicer. I'm using a profile that was Danny. Uh, I said I prudently one gave me, which is a really great profile. This printed in about four hours or something, which is really good. And now, like, I've tightened the belts and I've done the retracting settings and I've got, like, the extrusion on point now, I think. I'm getting some really, really nice prints out of this. And what I should say is what probably what I haven't mentioned already is this printer is only £150 or, like, $170 on Amazon, which is super, super cheap. Like I said, I have a Creality CR6 SE, which is the other print I've got, which is a quite a lot more expensive. And I'd say like the quality of prints, whilst this one doesn't have an automatic bed leveling system, which is a kind of a shame. For the price, I'm getting the same level of like same quality of prints. However, the user experience with the Neptune is a lot better compared to the Creality one. So I'm going to be using it day to day to print stuff like this for, for gaming boards. As I said like for the Las Vegas and open stream that we did, I actually 3D printed pretty much the entirety of the terrain on the board, which is in a building. I 3D printed all of those. So this printer, along with the Creality in, in conjunction, they're going to be printing like some really high quality stuff. And this is, again, for, for like half or nearly a third of the cost, like to be able to produce something essentially equivalent print quality if not better and at a higher speed than i can achieve with the cr6 I actually i can actually print a lot faster with the, the neptune 2 i was having a lot of issues with the cr6 when i started to try and up the speeds but the neptune 2 seems to be handling fast speeds really well which is actually really 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 impressive in my opinion now obviously elegoo did send me this printer for free so you can take my opinion with a pinch of salt as i kind of suggest you do with all review videos that you watch on the internet but me personally i'm going to be using this printer quite a lot is i'm going to be using them in conjunction with each other but i am really really impressed with this printer like when i when i got it and when i was building it i didn't know how much it cost um i only actually found out a few days ago before making whilst i'm making this video actually how cheap it is and now when i was like kind of building it i was like it doesn't have a it doesn't have a an automatic bed leveling system i'm a bit but then when you realize like just how much that cost saving is for not having that and just spending a bit of time getting it leveled and then using a slicer that for me actually works i don't know if you have an issue with cura let me know if you don't have an issue with this cura then yeah let me know as well <laughs> once i'd actually got the printer up and running it was really pleasant to use i'm kind of finding that with a lot of fdm printers and, and printers in general it's kind of like a lot of people especially from my community are kind of wanting printers to do something for another hobby such as warhammer uh, but 3d printing in it is a hobby in itself and i want to make sure that people kind of know that because working with 3d printers that aren't working is really really frustrating but it's very rewarding very satisfying when they do start working but once they do start working it's kind of that's it you're kind of there but it's kind of like getting to that stage can be quite a lot and it can be frust quite frustrating so i just want to make sure like i convey that message across but all in all this printer once i spent four days with terrible printing and then when i finally got it working then i'm really impressed so i'm really impressed with the print quality the print the speeds i'm getting out of it is really good something else that i printed which is a little bit more functional is this little ipad stand for using on live bot reports where i'm trying to watch the chat so you can kind of set it up like this and then you can set it up damn that's how i take this so there you go that's been my review of the elegoo neptune 2 if you enjoyed this video or you find it helpful then do let me know down in the comments people commenting leaving likes and stuff like that really really helps out the videos so if you did enjoy it or found something useful then do let me know that'd be really good i try to reply to every single comment i can if you're interested in other 3d printing review content i've got a review for the elgu saturn the elgu mars 2 pro and the Creality cr6 so you can check that out as well if you want to if you want to do that before you do any purchasing if you want to make sure you like you want to hear what i think about these printers i'm using Massive shout out to Elgu for sending me this printer so I can make this video. Massive shout out to I'll print you on for helping me pretty much every night for the past week while I'm trying to work this out. And thank you again to Uncle Jesse. He's also done a review of the Elgu Neptune too, so I recommend you go check it out as well. So thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.